sketch the graph of the piecewise defined function f of x equal to x when x is less than or equal to minus 3, 4 minus x squared when x is between minus 3 and 2, minus x when x is greater than or equal to 2. Then sketch the absolute value of f of x and describe the absolute value of f of x as a piecewise defined function. First, sketch the graph of f of x. So we have a piecewise defined function with three pieces. So we're going to sketch the graph of each, mark off the regions of interest, and then put everything together in a single final graph. So first piece, y equals x. So it's going to be a straight line through the origin, slope is equal to minus 1. We only want the piece where x is less than or equal to minus 3, so we'll darken that in. And note, we're going to keep the point x equals minus 3. That's because we have an equality here. Next, we have y equals 4 minus x squared. This is going to be a parabola. If I sketch x squared, it's a parabola based at the origin, facing up. Multiply by a minus 1, it becomes facing down. Add 4, we shift everything up by 4. So it looks like this. Of course, if you want points to guide your graph, we put a 0 in, 4 comes out. So it's going to be our y-intercept right here. If I want the x-intercepts, we set our function equal to 0. So I'll have 4 minus x squared equals 0, x squared equals 4, x equals plus or minus 2. So our x-intercepts are going to be at minus 2 and 2. We'll use those points later on. Then we only want the part of this graph between minus 3 and 2, so we'll darken that region. Now note we only want between minus 3 and 2, so we'll have open endpoints. Finally, we have y equals minus x. So again, we have a straight line through the origin. Here the slope is minus 1. And we only want the part where x is greater than or equal to 2. So again, we darken that part, and then we keep x equal to 2. We take the three pieces, we put them together. This is going to be the graph of f of x. OK, some things to note. Note for our point at x equal to minus 3, this piece of the line is going to be above this part of the parabola. So note, if we take a look at both functions at minus 3, Okay, the line's going to have minus 3, which will be here. 4 minus 9 is going to be minus 5, which means we're below. Then note if we're going to pay attention to this point over here, note that here we're going to have, if I put in 2, we're going to get a minus 2. So this point has a y value above this point, just to keep things a little bit tight. So that's the graph of f of x. Next, let's look at the graph of the absolute value of f of x. So what's the rule? If I have a part of my graph that's above the x-axis, we take the absolute value. What happens is we leave it alone. Then for the parts that go below the x-axis, we take the absolute value. We're going to flip them up above the x-axis. So why does this rule hold? Let's take a look at the definition of the absolute value. So if I take absolute value of box, if box is greater than or equal to zero, we just get box back. So if you have zero or positive number, take the absolute value, you just return your number. Box is negative, so box is less than zero. We want to get rid of the minus sign. So we do that by multiplying by a minus one. So if box is less than zero, we're going to return minus box. Let's put f of x into the box. So if f of x is greater than or equal to zero, we're just going to return f of x. What this says, okay, f of x greater than 0 means your y values are positive, so your graph is above the x-axis. What we're going to do is, is just return the same y values. So you don't change the graph at all. If f of x is less than 0, we're going to return minus f of x. So this means our y values are negative, or we're below the x-axis. The rule is saying you're going to change the y values, say y to minus y. So it's going to be flipping above the x-axis. So that's our rule. OK, let's apply it to our special case. Now, I'm going to look for the parts of the graph that are above the x-axis. 
So it's gonna be the parabola between minus two and two. We just bring that over as it is. So as so. Then for the parts that are below the x-axis, we're gonna flip them up. So this line comes up here like this. This line here comes here like this. This part of the parabola comes up like this. So this is the graph that comes out. So that's our absolute value of f of x. Now, we've done all the work to get the piecewise defined function that goes with the absolute value of f of x. So let's see what happened. Now, the only thing we didn't change was the part of the parabola between minus two and two. So let's take a look. So first part, the part that doesn't change, that's gonna be four minus x squared between minus two and two. And I wanna keep the minus two. Then everything else changes by a minus sign. So for x less than or equal to minus three, we're gonna have a minus x. For x greater than or equal to two, I'm gonna have x. Then we're just gonna have the piece of the parabola that flips up. So that's between minus three and minus two. We're gonna change by a minus sign. So it's gonna be minus four minus x squared or x squared minus four. So that's gonna be our piecewise defined function for the absolute value of f of x.